Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the definite integral from zero to pi of sine squared t times cosine to the fourth t dt. So pause the video if you want to try it on your own. This one's a good test to see how sharp you are with your trig identity since you need a few for this integral. So to start off, I want to remind you that sine of 2t is equal to 2 sine t cosine t. And we're going to use that double angle identity to get the ball rolling in the beginning. Now, notice here I have cosine to the fourth, but only sine squared. So I'm going to break up cosine to the fourth and group two of them with the sine squared t and then leave two of them minding their own business at the end of the problem. So we've got sine squared t, cosine squared t, and then the other cosine squared t dt. So let's focus first on sine squared t times cosine squared t. That's really resembling the sine t cosine t that I have here. So that means that one half sine 2t is sine t cosine t. And then I can basically take out the squared and group sine t cosine t and have that entire quantity squared. So now what I'm going to do is come back to my integral, replace sine t cosine t with one half sine 2t, and then square all of it. All right, here we go. So we've got 0 to pi, one half sine 2t squared. And then what do we do with this cosine squared t? We use our half angle identity. So cosine squared t I can replace with one half times one plus cosine 2t dt. Good? All right, so recap. Let me recap for you. All of this got replaced with one half sine 2t squared, and then here's my cosine squared t, and it's replaced with one half times one plus cosine 2t. Okay, I've basically reduced the order of all the trig functions in the integral, right? We had squared to the fourth, and now we have, we have lower powers on all our trig functions. And it's good too because the argument's the same, 2t, 2t, so things are looking nice. You know me, I always like to take the constants outside immediately. So 1 half squared is 1 fourth, and then I have another 1 half. So we've got 1 eighth outside our integral, 0 to pi. This becomes sine squared 2t times 1 plus cosine 2t dt. And then from here, we're pretty much home free from the tricky part. I'm going to distribute sine squared 2t, and we'll tackle this one term at a time. So 1 eighth integral 0 to pi sine squared 2t plus sine squared 2t cosine 2t dt. All right. Now, at a quick glance, I see, all right, sine squared all by itself. I'm going to use the half angle identity to evaluate the antiderivative. Here I have sine squared, but oh, thankfully I have an odd power of cosine, so that will let me do a u sub. So let me split this into two and we'll just tackle them one at a time. So first integral is going to be 1 eighth integral 0 to pi sine squared 2t dt. So like I said, we're going to use our half angle identity, so leave the 1 eighth out there, replace sine squared 2t with 1 half times 1 minus cosine, now it needs to be 4t, you double the argument, dt. So we've got 1 16th outside, antiderivative of 1 is going to be t minus, this is 1 4th sine, excuse me, sine 4t, and we'll evaluate that from 0 to pi. Perfect. So this is going to be now 1 16th times pi minus 1 fourth times sine of 4 pi is 0 minus my lower limit of 0 everything 0 so this is pi over 16. good good now my second integral is going to be 1 eighth times integral from 0 to pi of sine squared 2t cosine 2t dt so let's get that going so 1 eighth integral 0 to pi sine squared 2t cosine 2t dt. So whenever you have one uh, power of cosine or sine that's odd, you want it all by itself. And this basically we want to get absorbed when we do our u substitution. So you want this to be du or a constant multiple of du. So I'm going to let u be just sine 2t. So let u 
be sine 2t. Never put the exponent. Don't make it sine squared 2t. Because then when you find du, you're going to have to do the chain rule. It's going to make a big old mess. So 2 cosine 2t dt. All right, see, that's almost what we have here. So 1 half du is cosine 2t dt. And then from here, don't forget, we need to change our limits of integration because 0 and pi belong to the variable of the integral, which is t. Very good. we got to switch them to u. So u of 0 would be sine of 2 times 0, which is 0. And then u of pi would be sine of 2 pi, which is 0 also. Oh my goodness. What does that mean for us? That means we have no work to do. This is going to be 1 eighth. When I switch my limits, it's going to go 0 to 0, and I don't even care what the integrand is. I don't. Because if your lower limit and upper limit are the same constant, then we know this is all equal to 0. There's no area under the curve. We haven't moved. Oh, we love it. Okay, if it bothers you that I didn't actually write out the integral, I'm sorry. But, you know, time is precious. Let's get on with our lives. So we have pi over 16 plus 0, which is pi over 16. And we're done. So that's it. That concludes the integral of the day. Did you do it differently? I mean, the nastiest case with these trig integrals is when you have <laughs> um, both even powers, right, on sine and cosine. If you have both even powers on tangent and secant, it's not so bad. It's different. It's different. But those sines and cosines, it's great when somebody's odd. If both are odd, then you got options. But anyways, if you need to review how to tackle these trig integrals, I have several video lectures. I'll link them in the description. And they're on the Calculus 2 video lectures playlist. So make sure you brush up, especially if you're going to take Calc 3 or differential equations or other math classes. You don't want to get rusty. You need to integrate so, so much. And anyways, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Let me know how you enjoyed it in the comments. If you did something different, I'd love to hear it. And stay tuned for more content coming your way. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. I'll be back soon, guys. Bye.